In my recent review video for the 4K UHD release of June Part 2, I showed and spoke about the motorized masking in here and the tabs, the curtains, and what their purpose is, what they're all for. Well, this does seem to have generated quite a response with many people asking me how it all works, what's it for, why have I done it all, and how did I do it? Well, I have been directing people to my previous videos that have included this subject matter and I have shown it in some detail previously but have to admit even I struggle to remember which videos those are but there was a home cinema tour when we moved here and I showed the masking and everything as it was when it came out of the previous cinema and I've done one or two updates since then but rather than keep directing everyone to previous videos I thought let's go through it all again I'll open the curtains now and then you'll be able to see exactly how all of this works Right, well, this is currently in roughly the 185 to 1 aspect ratio, obviously for the films today that come with that format. 178 to 1 actually goes in this format as well, and I just cut off a bit on the black masking. That's the simplest way of doing it. Gives you the biggest image this way anyway, rather than reducing the width of it. Now, cinemas used to all have motorized masking. It was just how it was done. It was professional. There were audiences in order to sort of fund the maintenance and fund the investment that went into the cinema. That's not quite the case today, so I'm trying to be a little more understanding, but I still cannot stand it when I go into a cinema studio and I just see a 2.40 to 1 screen slapped on the wall with the curved edges in the corners. That to me isn't the way to do cinema, but we have to accept that audiences are not what they once were and they're just not getting the revenues and the films they come out on home video and streaming now about three and a half four months after they've been in the theaters so things are not what they once were in cinemas and certainly if you've got an enormous screen then having tabs the curtains and the motorized masking is going to create an awful lot of expense that you could really do without if you were managing a cinema or a cinema chain but to go to the 2.40 to 1 aspect ratio or the myriad aspect ratios ideally you just want to move the side masking out which the biggest screens can do but even in the 90s i used to notice that the bottom mask would move a bit or the top mask to give more headroom on flat films 185 to 1 so that they weren't quite so small as they appeared when you went from 240 to 1 to 185 to 1 but this would be basically how you do it if you had a wide enough screen but this isn't so I maximize the headroom a bit by moving the masking top up and the masking bottom down that's roughly the 2.40 to 1 format but you can adjust it for 235 to 1 if you really want to mess around but generally I just have it to a couple of specific settings the 240 to 1 the 185 to 1 and then anything else just has a bit of cropping and my experience of cinema in the well throughout my life actually until recently was that cinemas would always have a bit of overspill on the masking and even in Empire One which for many years was my favorite cinema when it was an all-in-one auditorium fantastic 1600 and something seating capacity I think the huge screen there with quite a curve on it you could see the keystoning at the bottom and a bit of cut off so if it's good enough for the Empire or it was good enough for the Empire it's good enough for me and so this is how we project it here. Now the tabs, the curtains, this was another feature of cinema because going to the cinema used to be considered something special. And there are still many cinemas around that have retained their tabs, their curtains, and it's all part of the showmanship. In fact, I did show them in operation at the Prince Charles Cinema just off Leicester Square when we went there for the 70 millimeter presentation of 2001 A Space Odyssey. So they're still using them. That's how I think cinema should be. It makes you feel like you're watching a show before the film starts. So just something special about curtains. And that was what I wanted in here. It's what I've always wanted in my home cinema hasn't always been possible but since we've had a dedicated room that was something that I wanted to do right it all works off this control unit here which is something I've made out of card and black tape but mainly to contain everything in one place so this is the x10 controller 
which does most of the automation in here. There's the model number, so I'll put that in the description below if anyone wants to source these. They were still available when I last got one a couple of years ago. But also in here, this is the bottom masking, which Mark Stuckey actually got sorted for me. It's its own dedicated remote because that's running off linear actuator motors, which is completely different to the rest of it, which is all running off rather basic curtain motors. It's pretty simple. But I used to have it all on one and the top and bottom mask would run off the first one. And as one went up, the other would go down. But because the screen in here is so much bigger than our previous home cinema, it was just too heavy for the curtain motor. The side masking runs off number two. And what you do with the X10, once it's gone to its stop position, you press off and then it's ready to reset. And next time it comes on, goes the other way. This is the motor for the top masking, which runs on a roller blind. So I've got that on a chain so that it's much stronger than just a cord. Well, I think that's everything about how the motorized masking works. The motors are not the quietest things. These are now supplied by a company in America called Adder Motor. This is an older one, but not the quietest thing. If I was to be looking into this again, I would probably first go to a dedicated curtain motor supplier such as Swish over here in the UK, see if they could do something bespoke for a home cinema that would suit. But because these work with X10, these seemed ideal for me 24 years ago when I first started doing all this. The modules they plug into, this is the transceiver. This is the one that receives the signal from the X10 controller when I hit the on button and the off. And this receives the signal, sends the signal around the wiring loom to look for whichever device is into number one, which is this, because the transceiver always defaults to number one. Number two is the side masking. Number three is the curtains. You can have up to 16 actually, but the appliance module that talks to the transceiver, they look pretty similar, just hasn't got the antenna on it, but you can see on there the code, which is set to code B. Yes, code B. And this one is set to number five, but this one's currently not in use. It's a spare, but that's the appliance module. This is the transceiver. This one was used, but I'll put all these model numbers in the description below. Now, other things that have been updated in here since I last did a home cinema tour video. I have, of course, shown this several times in videos since I put it up here, a light box to show off the IMAX frames that Michael at the IMAX has sent me in more recent months. Also, standard 17 millimeter frames and 35 mil. That's rather special when that's on when you come in. I had to make a modification to the exit sign because the original fluorescent power supply packed up. So I put an LED in there and it's on a rotating color, which is rather nice. And this was something that required some work. Just about see it there. The Pioneer THX amplifier, that's now on its own dedicated platform, so completely isolated from the subwoofer, because if I'd have left it on there much longer, I think the sub would have shaken it to pieces. So that was another recent modification. Another modification was to match this platform here that Davy the Builder expertly knocked up. I, well, tried to replicate the work he'd done to put this other back row seat on its own platform with the same carpet tiles to match the existing platform. And one other thing, apart from all the HMV cushions and fop cushions that my wife has made, I put my rollable poster in this frame here and the Halloween poster is now currently outside the cinema in the snap frame out there. So I do swap the light box over occasionally I have to say, I think that's the most suitable poster. I think the Spider-Man 2 has got more suitable colours, but there's just something about 
uh, last night in Soho. It looks a bit like a neon sign and that's one of the reasons I like it so much. Right, I think that probably brings us to the end of another tour video. Hope it's been informative and answered some of the questions. I suppose the only thing that remains to be done is to close the curtains. Right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on creating similar content to this in the future. Until the next video, bye bye for now.